17 once again. This is my credit feeding fight stickery, and welcome to the transition onto online fighting. So you've noticed in the past, I've done a couple of the ranked matches, and I picked up Ultra, which this footage is give or take a, a couple weeks old at this point. But I've just got off with some matches with Criminal, and uh, I've just been recording the Devil May Cry playthrough, which gives you some context to about what time it is at this moment. And this is going to be my first ever endless lobby against a guy by the name of Marketman316. I assume he is a uh, Stone Cold fan with that, or maybe he's just biblical, I don't know. Or maybe it's random numbers, you know. It's one of those strange things. I'm sure he'll tell me after this. But Marketman is, is one of those players that... <laughs> uh, just an addendum here, guys. Marketman is a good player. I am not a good player. I am a new player trying to get good, trying to learn from people better than me. And everybody at this point in time is better than me because I don't really have, you know, that Street Fighter in me at the moment. I have the capacity to learn, I have the drive, and I have some of the links down and some of the setups. But when it comes to, you know, straight up fighting humans, I get my ass handed to me. But I don't look at it as failure. I don't look at it as something, you know, to get mad at. And I don't get mad at all when I'm doing these sets. I'm laughing, I'm having a good time, and... Uh, it's kind of strange that in all the people I've been playing in these Endlesses, none of them have mics. I've not really been able to do some shit talking and have some fun back and forth with them while we've been going. But not to worry, I'm sure in the future that'll change. And when I get some new participants, they'll probably have mics and we can we can shoot the shit. They can tell me what you know they think can improve or, or when I'm doing something. Because Street Fighter is one of those really strange things where when you watch it, even when you're playing it, you know you're doing something wrong, like you, you fall into patterns, you start doing the same thing, or you start doing the same jump-ins, or you start punishing the same way, or you start responding with the same thing at certain distances, and the mark of a good player is somebody who adapts, who notices this and punishes you, and I just, I don't have that yet, I have it sometimes, momentarily, for those fleeting moments, but I'm just nowhere near experienced enough, or good enough at this point. And I see myself at times falling into these patterns. Today was a great example. I was doing a set with, with Krim, and, uh, and how you'll spot the difference, basically, is I'll wear one outfit. This is what I'm going to do, folks. This is how you know what's different. I'm going to stick with one outfit for the full set. The next set we have, I'll change the costume. And in spite of the fact you are looking at my favourite Seth costume, the torn shirt one, um, I will not be wearing this as much as I would like, because that way I can differentiate between footage. He does a fantastic cross-up there, which... I actually know how to block, because that is a cross-up I do myself as a Seth player, it's something he gets from Dal Sim. And he does it to me again, and it lands perfectly. Now, one good thing to do in that situation, if you're struggling, is to neutral jump. Jump up into the air, come down with a fierce, go into a punish. That right there was me mashing stun to get away, and while I do it, I, I twirl the analogue. And every so often when I recover from a stun, I can get in a cheeky SPD, because it's a three-frame move, very dangerous, you know, it'll beat out a lot of different moves, especially online with lag. But, as I was saying anyhow, Marketman is is a guy who, who mains Dal Sim, but he doesn't really play his main too much, because he likes to experiment, he likes to play with different characters, and he wants to give me some experience against different members of the cast, as you can see right now, he's gone five up against me. And you're going to see a lot of this, guys, because... There's some pretty rusty stuff here. But this is a dude who contacted me, and his words were, you know, I'm not too good, uh, but, you know, we can have some fun sets. I'm a bit rusty, this kind of thing, and there's two types of human beings that talk like that. There's the one who is self-deprecating, and a lot better than that, and then there's the other person who, you know, straight up is, is not too good, and they're just being that way. You know, they're just telling you honestly that, you know, you're probably going to beat me up, but we'll, we'll have some fun. Well, market is the the former of that situation. This is a person who says, yeah, I'm not too bad, and then he has a C plus rank with every member of the cast. And then he goes on to, to show me really solid fundamentals, you know, a really good knowledge of, of not jumping too much and punishing and, and, you know, I was no good at throw teching on this game at all online. And then I fought Market and he threw my tits off. And at this moment in time, I'm probably a little too eager to throw. So anybody who crouch techs is going to destroy me because of the nature of my, my, my conditioning from versing market and him ruining with me with throws. And even today, playing against Criminal, like I'm grabbing him a ton because I think he's going to grab me because I assume now, this, it's like this thing I've got in me that every time somebody gets close and I'm in a hit string, a grab's coming. Or, 
you know, when I'm just out of the range of something or I've whiffed something, because of the lag and it can be quite tricky to do your punishes and get your links coming out, there are throws coming, so uh, I find myself throwing a lot, and it's not because I want to be that type of person who does nothing but throw, because I suppose you could perceive a throw to be quite cheap because it's incredibly powerful and it's tough to tech online, uh, depending on your connection, but that's not really the guy I want to be, but back to, to market anyhow, this is a guy who... He is a fighting game player, and I was reminded almost immediately in this set that this is a guy who, who knows how to play fighting games. And it's it's awesome, I can't even express how grateful I am, as he tries to use the Lariat to get through the Sonic Boom, which I think he was doing it then for anti-air purposes, but it works as an invulnerability to, to projectiles, so that's really clever. I go for the cross-up there. You're going to spot me doing the wrong cross-up because I'm really used to... I think it's a bit laggy there. A little bit of back and forth on the old connection. But you'll see me do the wrong cross-up. Because at this point, this was my first day on Ultra and I wasn't used to it. So there's a dropped combo. I went from low into high and then nothing. You're going to see a ton of that. That I don't know what that is. I like to hope that was a teleport because if I was doing a Dragon Punch from that range, I'm pretty damn ambitious. Maybe it was a failed Ultra. Uh, that could have been it as well. But I think market is really solid and uh, I'm really appreciative of our sessions and our future sessions because he's making me a better player much quicker than I would if I'm playing somebody who's just as goofy as me jumping around like an idiot and not anti-airing and you know not throw teching and understanding block strings and what's punishable and what's not and you know working on those hit confirms that was unfortunate so that right there uh, something to talk about he did an attack in midair so when he lands there is a, a certain amount of frames where he cannot do anything if I'm to understand this mechanic right and it's something called trip guarding where you are essentially negative and you cannot block on landing. Yeah I did my ultra which is I think 11 frames uh, or 10 plus 1 frames or I assume 11 I think that's what that calculation means and I wasn't able to punish him in spite of the fact uh, it was as he was landing after doing whiffing an attack where he should be able to be trip guarded should he not I'm sure there's some science in that. Maybe it's lag, maybe it's, you know, I didn't do it fast enough. I'm not too sure, but little knowledge there for you. As I'm doing a decent job of putting some distance between me and Zangief and, and hitting him with projectiles and trying to hit him. Oh, I landed it! Oh, that was unfortunate. He used the invincibility of the green hand to go through my uppercut because it's, I think it's something along the lines of maybe nine frame startup. I don't know the frame data on that, that crouching face, but it's, it's okay. But the connection is probably something I should talk about. I do not have the best connection. England does not have the best connection. But that being said, this is a green bar that fluctuates to yellow, depending on what it wants to be. And for the most, there is nothing to complain about. There's lag. It's online. There's always going to be lag. It's something you have to adjust to. But it never gets to the point where it's, it's too much. In fact, today was the first time where I've, I've done the, you know, the DSP thing of blaming the lag because I had three matches against Krim earlier on and I sent him a message like, I don't know if it was bad on his end, but fuck me, it was bad for me. Like, I couldn't even punish an ultra that was super negative. I dashed towards him and my second dash just never came out. And I'm not too bad at dashing, but that right there was an FADC cancel. So that's awesome to see, I didn't drop it. If you ever see me do a solitary single close fierce, which looks a little bit like Guile's anti-air uppercut thing, it means that I've, I've, I've dropped a link. There I do the empty jump into SPD because he quick stands, getting him very close to the kill. He's worrying now about what I'm doing on wake up, so I mix it up with a throw and I catch the round, which... The vortex on this game is both amazing and terrifying. When you're in it, god it sucks. <laughs> it sucks so bad. But when it's yours, you know, you have an opportunity of really play some mind games with people and... Like... You're not going to see too much mashing dragon punches, even though it's a very you know effective strategy. You'll see some some dragon punches, don't you worry about that, and you'll see some bad ones from me, as I try to make reads, which don't pay off sometimes. Like then, for some reason, I thought he was going to do a jump in, so I tried to throw out a dragon punch, a bit like that. That time I landed it, didn't get the steps. I should have dashed, as he switches it up to Makoto here. At this point, I'd never fought a Makoto, but I'd seen Mike Ross uh, play Makoto a lot so I understood that she does that kind of dash punch and she does like a sequence of weird punches that are up close to you I dropped my link just there from the two lows catch him with the nice so that was some meter 
on the EX. Dragon Punch comes in with a couple of lows, tries the overhead, goes for the EX, whatever that ground move is. That, I don't know what that move is, but it's strange. Wow, she's positive on that. I jump back into SPD and he throws something else out and I catch it. Move in close, try and get a couple of low kicks on. I think they're meaty low kicks. Oh, and there it was. Immediately with the, the EX armor breaker. Really nice punish there. You can see I was going for a focus. Keeps me in the corner. Here comes the corner pressure. There is the, the neutral overhead. Couple of lows. I hop out of the corner. Throw a quick sonic boom. Try and fake a teleport to see what he'd do and then jump forward. I'm not really too educated on safe jumps with Seth. I'm not even too sure what that, that phrase means. I assume it is a space of time after a move where you are safe to do a jump. I think that's what that is. And for instance, if you get a hard knockdown, of course you can always like dash forward and do a jump before they can really respond to anything. And if you're up against somebody who's a little twitchy, you might be able to hold down back and block a show you can and go into a punish. One thing I found online is it's really difficult to block light, uh, to sorry, to punish a blocked light show you can with anything other than a throw. Because you try and do these moves, like I try and tandem it closer to me and go into my normal links. Nicely converted it. Awesome. Do we get the steps? We do, finally. It's a bit more like it. Try and mix him up with an overhead. He blocks it, catch the throw, toss him out of the corner. You'll see me do that quite a lot with Seth. I like to just be going back and forth. I like to constantly be just reckless and bewildering. And a lot of the times it doesn't pay off, but when it does, it feels really fun. And it's, it's the kind of player I want to be. I want to be dangerous because you don't know what I'm going to do. And this is the perfect character for it. As I jump back into Ultra, does it punish? He does his own. Which one wins? Mine beats his Ultra. And uh, I get one of my first victories in this set. So here's his, his Balrog. I listened to somebody on a stream and they said Balrog had a two frame jab. And I looked on the frame data and he doesn't. Which is a bit misleading. The guy has a three frame jab. And it's, it's really fast. But it's not two frame. Two frame would be crazy. Two frame would... Would that trade with an SPD? I don't even know. I don't know if SPDs are, are hit invincible. But yeah, the, the connection for the most is, is pretty spot on. I'm really looking forward to somebody who I have an awesome connection with because that person's going to get seven hours of, of Endless with me if he wants it. Because playing this game offline is so fun, guys. Like, I cannot wait for the next convention somewhere, like Manchester or, or Blackpool or wherever it is. I haven't really been checking, and I do have to save up for an America trip this year but in spite of it can we get anything yeah look at that i was negative should have spd'd or thrown he throws me i punish his ex dash punch does it win the thing with seth's ultra is every so often people will beat it like the computer beats it all the time with ex dragon punches the fuckers because they know of course that you're doing it and then they respond and boom it's three frames good luck but we're getting close oh i do the hit string into the tick throw spd here comes the mix-up. What do I do? D oh, that was bad. Bad spacing on my part. Now, what I was trying to do there is FADC through the fireball into the single toe tap, into the crossover, into a light shot. If I hit confirm that into a move, I'm good. If I don't, I'll probably try an SPD or get some chip with the um, sonic boom. I'm trying to get better at, in my hit string, my block strings, doing sonic booms when I come out of the range just to get that extra bit of chip. Wow, DJ. So, Market Man plays charge characters really well. I don't. Charge characters to me are, are a character that, like I was, I was on Third Strike the other night and I was doing, what the fuck was it? I think it was Q or it might have been Urian, but they've got a, this, this trial where you have to do a normal move and then you have to do a, a charge move. And there's not enough time to do the normal move and charge and then hit them with the charge move like I just don't get that and I understand that you can buff a charge you know through animations and stuff and I'm not too bad at that but there's no time to do it like and it's not a low attack either so it's not like you can just be buffering before you do it do the low and then go into the, the charge move so charge characters are strange that was my throw we didn't get a tech or a trade he just threw me because mine was a, a bit early and out of range He's got some nice corner pressure with DJ. I've been watching a lot of Pi Psy streams with DJ. I love that guy, and it's not just because he's overly Jamaican. It's literally because he puts up with what they've done to the character that he loves, and he's loyal to it. And coming from somebody who plays a character that has the lowest stamina in the game, I can understand the frustrations of your character having, you know, limitations. But, you know, Seth compared to DJ, I think this should be in my favour every day because DJ is just, there's no fixing him, like every single time they try he gets no better and 
as much as a great player can make him look good, objectively, he suffers so strongly, unless you're, what was it, Memoji's new tier list, where you put fucking DJ B tier with Rose, like, how you smoking crack, dude? <laughs> like, I'm new to this game, but even I can tell that there's something wrong with that. And he puts Seth much higher than people have him, and it, and it makes me wonder, is that because of Punko and his ability to just destroy French people, or is that because he legitimately thinks that Seth is that strong? And don't get me wrong guys, I think my character is amazingly strong. I think Seth in the right hands, when you get those mix-ups, when you get those reads, I think he's unstoppable and scary and hopefully I can I can get into a, a level of skill with him where I can put a serious fear into people with the mix-ups, with the vortexes, you know. So he picks Rose here and I go for the, the, air, the overhead into sweep. I did a lot of that today and I'm really sorry Criminal, I didn't want to, it's just sometimes you kind of do. Like whenever I'm out of range, ooh nice, block string into SPD. I need to start mixing that up between one and two hits because people are going to start reading it that I'm doing it if I go for it too much and they'll probably neutral jump and then punish because the recovery on SPD real big. Interesting, there was a quick throw. There's the, the focus, I try and punish with my you know, longest reaching show you can don't quite get it and then I'm jumping like an idiot and I get deservedly punished. So there was an opening haiku kyaraku 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 whatever that move's called. That was a interesting choice. I don't know why I did that over the uh, legs because I didn't have the, the meter to cancel it. Maybe I wasn't watching my meter bar. I do get rather excited. So comes over, crosses me up, gets a couple of lows, goes into a slide. Another jump over cross up. I need to work on the anti airs. I also need to work on being predictable with my sonic booms. I'm doing that today, and, and Criminal was punishing them really well. But that's another hit confirmed that there's no excuse to drop. There he goes again. He knew the the sonic boom was coming. He jumped in, got that free bit of damage on me. Every time you let somebody damage you as Seth, you are one third of your life towards death. You do not survive. Ooh, there was the the sonic boom cross up, which market knows all too well because he's a sim player and then I jump into a fireball because I'm an idiot. But there's an opening focus into the low into legs. That will not work if you crumple them and they've crumpled to a certain point. Because, oh shit, connection. Ah, is that lagging? So Vega, I've played quite a lot of Vega but it's obviously computer. Computer Vega is a nightmare because they do all kinds of weird jumping off the wall shit that looks like you should be able to punish it but for some reason it's very tricky. <laughs> Of course, humans are not quite as crazy like that. The only reason I blocked that is because I have experience against Vegas. I uh, say Vegas, a Vega, and he's got the worst punishes because he's computer. Same with that, that rolling attack. If they're close enough to you, you can beat them with an SPD because they're negative after it on block uh, to an extent where the SPD will win. But of course, if they're out of range and a Vega player generally wants to keep you in that pork range, uh, you might have a lot of trouble. There's the overhead as Vega, there's the walk up throw because I'm blocking. It was so obvious when you look back, but at the time I'm just like, Ugh, no idea what's going on. So that's a mistake. You will never see me do an EX tandem. Uh, I must have pressed the wrong button. I will only ever do EX tandem to catch people after EX show you can, because to me, it's a bit of a waste of meter. Uh, I'm sure that's a, an ignorant statement from a, a better Seth player, but I've yet to really understand the full use for EX tandem over standard tandems. I know it has some special properties, but aside from doing some fancy links, the, there was a nice punish. Is that Vega's sweep, that slide attack? Because Relento has a sweep that's just like that, it does a crazy slide. But that's the end of part one of the set. I will see you in the second part. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck if you're learning Street Fighter. It is a cruel mistress, but hopefully you can hook up with some friends or some cool players, and they can help you get through, you know, those early panicking stages and just not knowing what you're doing because it's such an enriching and enjoyable game here and it just sucks that I'm like seven years late to it. But thank you for watching and you take care now.